Okay, let's start getting into QA for construction. Talk about QA tech brief as far as federal highways and then a little more on inspection testing. We do have our federal highways tech brief and construction as far as uh, federal highways that was written about five, six years ago. Has anybody ever seen it before? Okay. When and if you get a chance, I guess I'd say you, you'd, uh, what is it, about six pages? We wrote this, again, in coordination with our Turner Fairbanks group, trying to bring attention on the QA uh, requirements, as well as how it couldn't be wrote into the design build contract. Again, a lot of the sides you've seen so far, and a few more coming up here, it's all uh, mentioned somewhat in this tech brief. So how many people have seen this tech brief again? Raise your hand high and proud. We have two proud people on their federal highways. That's good, I like that. They're federal highways people. Okay, again, pointing out in construction, same issues apply, quality assurance, the umbrella, contractor quality, QC control, states acceptance on the, uh, for the product. As far as now, we'll sort of run through similar like we did on design kind of org charts. <clears throat> Notice the design builder cannot be assigned responsibility to perform any acceptance activities. That usually causes a question or two. Any comments on that? You can use the contractor's information as part of your acceptance, but the contractor cannot make the acceptance determination. Okay, everybody okay with that? Okay, make sure to record that on, got it, okay, good, we're good. Okay. Uh, this is sort of an expansion of our 23 CFR 637 related to construction stuff. On the far left is the quality control stem. Again, remember three-legged stool. On the far right is the acceptance. In the middle are those other attributes related to the material sampling testing program that are required as part of the Federal Highways uh, program. First one is independent assurance. Second one is a dispute resolution. Third one is talking about the laboratory accreditation and qualification. Again, depending on what kind of terms you all use. And then the fourth one is the personnel qualification certification. Does anybody see anything on that slide or what I just mentioned that may be contrary to what you are all practicing? Okay. As far as contractor quality control, just trying to emphasize it's the system used by a contractor party to monitor, assess, and adjust their production. Again, emphasizing it's the contractor that's sort of in control of their own destiny for their product. But as you go out and validate them, that's what you need to make sure they're hopefully doing it on, you, uh, on their responsibility and not necessarily swinging it over or saying that, like, that's your job. And as the slide points out, it does go down even to their subcontractors, vendors, manufacturers, <clears throat> depending on what your process is set up to help do that, uh, some level of periodic, timely sampling and testing. Okay, this is getting into the construction QC system. Again, sort of mirroring what I showed you on the design side. Talks about frontline QC for construction production, then formal QC for the construction quality control team. It's sort of a check on check, but it depends what level you wish to do that. Here's an overall sample of the QC structure various staff, QC, the acceptance, et cetera. Anything there jumping out at you you got questions on? Okay, let's jump a little more into the inspection and testing. QC inspection. Like this sort of points out here, it's uh, sort of the bean counting, doing the visual inspection and check measurements, dimensions, trying to actually um, solidify that what you have in your spec, what you showed in your plans, line and grade, et cetera, are there per your plans. And then you got time to your sampling and testing. You want to maintain that there's some level of control. 
That's where most specs have a band on it, meaning that if you're too high, it may be out of spec. If you're too low, it may be out of spec. So you guys have any particular specs with bands on both sides? Yeah. So the question would be, if you're a contractor with design build, what would you expect your contractor to do if they police their own products? So that's with your think tanks you may want to develop. Ask with some uh, construction staff that are seasoned, see how that's working for you, and you may want to uh, stiffen it up a little bit, or maybe you want to be a little more flexible. It just depends on what you guys are actually culturally seeing out in the field. But give, give yourself some um, flexibility, because I would assume with your first couple of projects, design build, you may, do you plan to put your A team on it? or your B team on it? Or do you have an A design build team yet or do you have a B design build team yet as far as staffing? Uh, We're all you're all A plus? <laughs> all right, good positive spin on that one. <laughs> okay, construction QC procedures. Recognize again, again, it's like for a design bid build or yeah, design bid build projects. Three other type of uh, items and products that may be part of your sampling and testing program, which could be produced items such as uh, batch plant, concrete plant, bring the mud out in the field. Have a, a fabricated plant, which if you have a lot of bridges that are the same type size, maybe you can go to the plant and start them to start cranking it out. Somewhat similar if you heard about the 520 floating bridge up in uh, Washington State. They got a site, cleared it, pretty much built all the floating pontoons in that one place that the contractor established, all pretty much all the same size and they floated them up the channel and brought them into the uh, Lake Washington and just connected them. So that makes it pretty efficient. Then you have the standard manufactured materials, which is sort of like the shelf item, corrugated middle pipe, <coughs> reinforced concrete pipe, PVC pipe, et cetera. You can get it off the shelf. Each one of these products should have, again, as part of your approved product list, sampling and testing, and or just regular random sampling, should have some level of uh, spot checks to make sure it meets your specs. Do you guys have reciprocity agreements with some of your other states to do um, plant inspections for you if they are furnishing something to you from out of state? Precast pre plants. Pre plants, okay. Yeah, some states have stopped that because of cost, but there's still, what I, and that's why I was asking, there still seems to be a few states that are keeping that going, to me, which is a good idea. Okay, as far as agency acceptance, again, notice what we said about quality control, contract quality control. This is for state agency acceptance. That's you all. All factors used by an agency to evaluate the degree of compliance and contract requirements for your product. So again, that's where there needs to be a firewall between the contractors, quality control, people, staff, testing, calibrated equipment, and your staff. The catch, as I mentioned, one of my earlier slides, the acceptance for the product is entirely up to the agency. Again, to point out that you can use the contractor, can supply you information, but you still got the call. It's like even on environmental, I know one of the risks it was environmental, can the contractors uh, <clears throat> do the work for environmental? Well, they can provide information and or study, but you need to validate it and actually formally accept it. So same process, just a different topic. <clears throat>